Hey, it's Mark Leonard with your video thought for the day. I love to hear stories about history. Um, I've really enjoyed hearing my grandparents when they were alive tell me stories about what life was like you know, pre-World War II. I love to watch videos. There's a whole set of YouTube videos of what life was like in the 1950s, the 1960s. I was watching one the other night that had uh, kitchen uh, appliances and other kitchen goodies that were common in the 1950s that have disappeared. And you know, it was like one of those hand um, two uh, mixer things that instead of an electric mixer, you had like this hand crank and you cranked it. Some really cool stuff. And because it's in a video and there are pictures and all of this, you know it's reliable history and it just seems right. Well, there's something sometimes that happens where if you go back 2,000 years, if you go back 3,000 years, certain events often don't seem as valid even though they're historical. And we can get lost in not affording them credibility because our brains are used to associating fact with what we see or where there's a photograph or a movie or something like that. And so there are a lot of people who dismiss the idea of the Passover, that this exodus really happened from Egypt, as God called the Israelites out. And as we looked at Passover this week uh, and spoke about it, we were speaking about things that are historical facts. They're documented within Scripture, and they certainly make sense of so much of history. And yet, for some that are skeptical and cynics, it's as if it didn't happen. In the same way, Today is Good Friday, and Good Friday is the day in Holy Week where the, not just the arrest, but the crucifixion of Jesus is celebrated and, and honored with solemnity and yet with joy. And there's a host of people that just sort of dismiss it as if it didn't happen. Because it's, it's hard for our brains to wrap around these facts as historical when they're not in a photograph or a picture or something that we normally rely on. But it's interesting because you've even got secular writers from the first century who wrote about Christ being crucified. And by secular, I mean Roman writers who were dismissive of, of not of the event happening, but the deity of Jesus. They would still acknowledge that Jesus died. It was commonly acknowledged. If it had not been acknowledged, use some common sense with me here, how on earth would so many people believe it during that time period that we're still alive? I mean, you get the Apostle Paul, who's a contemporary of Jesus, and he's, he's at first a cynic, not that Jesus was crucified, but that Jesus was God or Messiah. There was never any doubt in his mind Jesus was crucified. You couldn't dispute that when people were still alive who remembered it. That's why he's quick to write to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 15. You know, there are hundreds of people still alive who saw the resurrected Jesus. But nobody disputed that Jesus died, which makes it really poignant for me this Good Friday because I not only know that Jesus died, but I know why he died. Jesus died because God himself 
wanted to restore a relationship with humanity, not global humanity, individuals within humanity, you and me. And so God wants that enough that God will do the God thing that is required. And in that God thing, all of the price, the just price, the, the appropriate sentencing for the crime, all of the price for sin is paid. Paid by an innocent. I've, I've, I've had my sins paid for in the cross of Christ. I, I'm going long, but I got to tell you one story. I had a professor, Dr. Harvey Floyd, and he was asked by a student one time, hey, tell us about the day you got saved. Dr. Floyd said, ah, it happened almost 2,000 years ago on a hill outside Jerusalem recognizing that in the cross of Christ is the salvation of mankind. Something to think about as we're on Good Friday rolling into Easter weekend. May God bless you this weekend, and I'll see you on Monday.